Welcome to another Sunday School Short. Today we are in John 5 and Matthew 12, walking through the New Testament chronologically, the way it happened, the way it was written, so that we get, uh, there's so many parallels, we get different viewpoints, but the same result, same message. So here we go, John 5. Don't neglect the reading. This is just a small synopsis of my daily Bible reading, meant to be a supplement, not a substitute for yours. John 5. They were in Jerusalem. Jesus was in Jerusalem at the pool of Bethsaida. A man had been sick for 38 years. Jesus said, would you like to get well? The man says, I can't. There's no one to help me in the pool waters when it bubbles up. And Jesus said, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Verse 8. And in 9, instantly the man was healed. Uh, this happened on the Sabbath. So the leader said to the man, hey, you can't work on the Sabbath. The law doesn't allow you to carry your sleeping mat. Um... He replied in verse 11, The man who healed me told me to pick up my mat and walk. Afterward, Jesus found the man and told him, Now now that you're healed, stop sinning so that something worse won't happen to you. Uh, the leader started harassing Jesus about working on the Sabbath. And in 17, he says, My father's always working, and so am I. The Pharisees started looking for a way to kill him. Uh, Hey, he called God his father, thereby making himself equal to God. And Jesus says, hey, the son only does what he sees his father doing. And it talks about the father giving authority to the son to judge those that listen to the message and believe in God. They'll have eternal life. Uh, verse 24, they have already passed from death to life. And that's the way it is with us. Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people Alive, and you pass from death to life once you understand that you're a sinner, uh, ask for forgiveness, believe that Jesus died on the cross, paying your sin penalty, my sin penalty. Death couldn't hold him. He rose from the grave. He has eternal life. He offers that to me and to you. We don't become saved at the end of our life. We become saved and made right with God. We experience eternity at the that moment when you come into agreement with who Jesus said he was. Verse 26, the father has life in himself and he has granted the same life giving power to his son. And in 29, those who have done good and remember in, in the Psalms and the Proverbs it says no one is good, no not one. But if we connect ourselves to the one that is good, we take on his sinless nature. Uh, we can't be sinless but we can be made perfect uh, through believing in Jesus. We connect ourselves to the one who is good. Uh, the, so the one who have done good will rise to experience eternal life, and those who continue in evil will rise to experience judgment, and we were born into sin. So automatically, our default is to experience judgment. It's only when we come to Jesus, believe in his saving power, what we just talked about, then we will experience eternal life. It talks about his teachings, his miracles, are witnesses, and prove that the Father sent Jesus. Verse 39, uh, you search the scriptures, talking to the Pharisees again, you search the scriptures because you think they have eternal life. But the scriptures point to me, he says. I have come to you in my Father's name, and you have rejected me. It talks about Moses, uh, in whom the Jewish people and the Jewish leaders put their hope in. He says, if you really believed Moses, you would believe in me because he wrote about me. And in verse 47, we end with, but since you don't believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, the disciples picking wheat as they're walking uh, on the Sabbath, walking through a grain field, and the Pharisees are saying, hey, they're working, they're working, they're harvesting grain. We've talked about this already. And then Jesus goes into, hey, David and his men were, uh, when they were starving, they, they ate loaves of bread in the, in the house of God that were only meant to be eaten by the priest. Haven't you read the law of Moses? The priest, verse 5, haven't you read the law of Moses? The priest on duty in the temple may work on the Sabbath. In verse 6, I tell you, there is one who is greater than the temple. The Son of Man, the title Jesus gave himself, is Lord over the Sabbath. We can't be legalistic about this. Yes, we should rest. Yes, we should worship. But we can't be legalistic. Uh, uh, 
in days past we talked about God made the Sabbath for you, not for you to further follow uh, more religious uh, requirements. 9 through 14, verses 9 through 14. Jesus went to the synagogue, saw a man with a deformed hand. This was a trap. The uh, Pharisees were trying to make a trap. Hey, is it lawful to heal a person on the Sabbath? Um, they were hoping to trick him and bring charges against him. Jesus said, if, you had a, if your sheep fell into a ditch on the Sabbath, wouldn't you work to pull him out? Of course you would. Uh, yes, the last part of 12. Yes, the law permits you to do good on the Sabbath. Jesus immediately said, hold out your hand, and it was restored. The Pharisees then called a meeting on, to plot on how to kill Jesus. Verses 38 through 45, the Pharisees asked for a miraculous sign to prove uh, for Jesus to prove his authority. Jesus said, the only sign I'll give you, although he, he had already given many signs of healings and miraculous things happen, but, and he would again, is that of the prophet Jonah. Just like him being in the belly of fish for three days and three nights, so I, the Son of Man, will be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. See, the people of Nineveh will condemn this generation because they repented. The people uh, Jonah was sent to Nineveh the people heard the message and they repented. The queen of Sheba will condemn this generation because she came to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. And now there's someone wiser here among you. Uh, in verse 50, it ends with, Anyone who does the will of my father is my brother, my sister, and my mother. This talks about when Jesus and his brothers came to visit him and he wouldn't come out to them immediately. And he said, Who is my brother and mother and sisters? And... He said, the people that do the will of my Father in heaven. Don't neglect the reading. Get in God's Word. Be a daily Bible reader. Like, subscribe, and share. God bless you.